Grand Theft Auto. Everybody talks about it. They think it's the best free roaming driving game. It's the one that started it all. And actually on the PlayStation, the original PlayStation, it was just a top-down driving game where crime paid, essentially. But if we look back, if we go back to the past, we can actually see where Grand Theft Auto might have gotten some of that inspiration. Let's see here. Motor City Patrol. And I think we should take a look at it. Let's do it! <sighs> All right. Unlike GTA, this time you're the police, patrolling and stopping crimes in your precinct. Taking down drug runners, stopping robberies, arresting crime lords. Sounds exciting, right? Well, that's not quite how it works in Motor City Patrol. As a valued officer of the law, you stop speeders and criminals on the street. Want to hop out of your car and stop a robbery in progress? Nope. You stay in your car. The entire game. Thanks, Matchbox! This cops and robbers game never really moves past the patrol cop career. Experience the life of a traffic cop on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Woo. There's really no story to the game. It has that arcade feel where it's all about the high score and lasting as long as you can before you get fired. Oh, and don't fool around. You can't have an off day in Motor City Patrol. They expect you to catch everybody on the map. Otherwise, you get warnings. They're always rubbing it in your face too. Poor performance, dire performance. Why aren't they just honest with me? Get it together! You chose the wrong career! This game is boring! You have to be the best traffic cop in the world. A super cop, actually. If only Jackie Chan were here. Oh, and those other cops on the road? Yeah, they don't give a crap about you or your problems with crime. They do nothing, just parked. All day, every day. So start up your siren, because it's up to you to pull everyone over. You earn merits for each criminal you stop, which can be used to purchase upgrades for your ride, or buy more bullets for your... three shooter. Yes, you can shoot at criminals to take them down quicker, but you risk the chance of shooting a civilian, or someone that's just speeding. Don't even waste your time with bullets. Just don't. Now there are five precincts that you patrol for seven days each. During the day, you're on the lookout for speeders and criminals. You hit the lights, start the siren, and block their path to arrest them. But you have to be careful that you're pulling over actual lawbreakers, so you constantly have to check the map. Black circles are innocent civilians, red circles are speeders, and yellow circles are the hardened criminals. Oh, and thank God for the map key. He's in A4! Let's get him! Uh, where's A4? Uh, red vans are always bad guys, so at least you can spot them on the main screen, but having to check your map for everyone else really slows the game down. And the criminals don't put up much of a fight trying to lose you. Oh, I'll just keep driving down this path at a manageable rate of speed! You'll never catch me, copper! Oh! Oh! Oh, you will. Now sometimes you'll get an alert about a public enemy, like this punk. And it's your mission to put them behind bars. Rawhide Pam! He's a cattle rustler. <laughs> they show up on the map as large red circles. Crazy shootout during a high speed chase? Nope, just pull over the blue sports car. Because as we all know, only criminals drive blue sports cars. Yeah, eat some justice, crook. But wait, there's more. See those flashing buildings? Those are crimes in progress and it's up to you to bring them down. How you might ask? Wait for it, wait for it. You just drive by the building. That's it. Is there some crime going on in here? I bet there's some crime in here. Stop your crime. Now once you complete all five precincts, that's 35 days of this crap, you start back over at the first one with all your upgrades. Yes, new game plus, but not really because the game repeats indefinitely until you get your butt fired. The upgrades are pointless anyway. First off, the controls are okay, but as you upgrade speed and steering, your car is all over the place, and more than likely, you're going to wreck it, just by trying to keep it on the street. And then, you're fired. And guess what? No passwords, no extra lives, no continues. You have to finish all five precincts in one sitting to beat the game. You wreck, 
shoot a civilian, or get too many warnings, and you're toast. Though you can pick up these flashy hoodly doos which are supposed to be stolen goods, if you get them all in one day, your warnings are expunged from your record. Easy, right? Well, there's 16 of them. You have crime to stop. You don't have time to run over flashy treasures. Now, other than those flashy treasures and the occasional shrubbery, visually, there's not much to look at. Everything is so... gray. Buildings are gray, streets are gray. Oh, there's a green tree. Oh, then back to gray. Even your police car lights are black and white. Really, game? Really? Couldn't get a little blue and red up in there? Not enough memory on the cartridge? All that space must be dedicated to the music, right? <laughs> Wrong! Music only awkwardly plays during menu screens and is abruptly cut off. All you have is the sound of your car. It would have been nice to hear nearby vehicles as some kind of hint to look out for them, but no, you'll just randomly run into cars with no warning. Sadly, this game proves that being the good guy all the time just isn't as fun. The game serves as a great starting point for the top-down, open-worldish style that led to GTA, but it feels like it could have had more... stuff to do. It gets repetitive quickly. Check the map, follow the bad guys, check the map, pull them over, check the map, patrol the buildings, check the map. Why isn't there just a mini-map on the screen? Dang, I really wanted to like this game. I remember liking it as a kid, but... Looking at it now... I was an idiot. <laughs>